everybody. Happy Tuesday, I think. No idea. Uh, Jilly from Baby Sleep Made Simple here, and we're continuing on with our Instagram lives every day, which again, I am probably loving even more than you are if you're loving it. Um, for many reasons, it's a great way for me to connect with you guys. It's a great way for me to feel connected, and it's a great motivator for me to have a shower every day. And again, I just, I don't know if that's a freckle or chocolate. It looks like a freckle. I was out in the sun today. Um, but I just binge ate a little bit more chocolate. Um, so it could be that too. Anyway, but I was out in the sun getting a really good dose of vitamin D. So the freckles usually come. Anyway, I hope you're all well. Um, this week is all about naps. If you were on my live yesterday, we talked about the basics of napping and I answered like Q and A's about napping. And the best part of yesterday is I discovered how to save these Instagram videos long-term. I think because I ran the app update on Instagram. So I did see that little arrow for those of you guys that really tried to help me. I did save it and it's on my YouTube channel. So if you missed yesterday's video and you wanted to like learn the basics of napping and hear a lot of Q and A advice, lots of six month, six month old nap questions. Um, you can just go to my YouTube channel, YouTube baby sleep made simple, and it should be the newest video there. It's an hour long because Instagram cut us off as usual. Um, if you want to check that out, which, and I'll try my best to save these videos from now on, which is really, really cool. Um, a few announcements. My, I have a program that's specifically for nap training. And what that means is it helps you get your baby sleeping independently for naps and taking consistent and predictable naps every day, which is beautiful. Um, your baby has to be at least six months old and sleeping wonderfully at night, independently at night and through the night, ideally, maybe one quick night feed where they go back to sleep on their own. That's the criteria for nap training, guys. So that's the criteria for my nap program. But I'm running a sale on it. It's 20% off. You can get it for $60. And it comes with a Facebook group where we answer your questions. Um, so it's a really good deal. You, If you are not ready for it, you could still get it now and utilize it later. Um, you get like a year's access to it. I've never kicked anybody out of my programs. But, you know, it's a year's access. And it gets a face, yeah, it comes with a Facebook group. So that link is in my bio here on Instagram. So you can click that and you can get taken to a page which describes the program. It all is so really cool. I came up with like extra lessons in it. So it talks about when you have siblings with competing schedules, it gives you example daily schedules for your baby, six months old to four years old. It talks about transitioning to daycare when that becomes appropriate again. Um, ah, and nap transitions. So you can check that out if you want. Um, speaking of nap transitions, tomorrow or the following day, we're going to discuss nap transitions. Tomorrow on our Instagram live, we're doing a Q and A coaching call with Ellen. Um, so probably Thursday, then we'll talk about nap transitions. So that's when you want to drop from three to two naps, two to one nap, when to drop the nap for your toddler. We could talk about dropping from four to three as well. That's not really that common of a question. Um, so that'll be that. Otherwise today we're gonna talk about how to extend your baby's short naps, which is basically nap training. So you can pick my brain on nap training. Um, we have an hour, probably like 57 minutes now to answer your questions. I made another little graphic. My daughter told me it was not pretty. <laughs> it had too many words on it. So of course I'll share that with you because I want to, but it's on my page and on my story. Yeah, it's on my story today. And it gives you like six um, steps for nap training. And nap training is simply teaching your baby to sleep independently for naps so that they can have consistently long and restful naps every day. Um, again, this can't happen until at least six months old. So usually like your little one, if your little one's six or seven months, they may start nap training taking three naps a day, but really quickly we get them down to two because they're probably ready for it. So nap training really involves little ones learning to nap twice a day consistently well or once a day consistently well, basically. Um, I also have a guide on my website on how to extend your baby's short naps. So you can check that out as well. Um, I just can't share lots of links on Instagram. Sorry, guys. But if you go to my website, babysleepmadesimple.com, and if you just do a search for extend short naps, it'll take you there. And a lot of the information is um, similar to the graphic I made today, but it has more details. It's nine steps. I kind of combined a few. So let me share it with you guys real quick before I start answering your questions. Because you know I love this. Here it is. So this is how to extend your baby short naps, an ugly 
graphic according to my five-year-old today. All right, so the six steps are here. So the first thing you have to do is you have to fix their night's sleep. And the reason why, I'm sure if you've been hanging out with me for a while, you know why, but the reason why we is because we always do nighttime sleep training first. Nighttime sleep training is the easiest to fix. And when you get your little one sleeping independently at night, it makes nap training go a hundred times easier easier. If you try to do both at the same time, of course, some parents can succeed, but a lot of parents give in because it's really, really bloody hard because your little one's fighting sleep at night for the first few nights. And then they fight sleep during the day, which makes them overtired, which makes night sleep worse. So we separate it out. So always fix night sleep first. That's the first part of nap training. And that means your baby falls asleep independently at bedtime and independently after any night waking. Ideally, they're sleeping through the night, 10 to 12 hours straight, or they could have one quick feed where they go back into their crib and fall asleep on their own. That's the criteria before working on naps because otherwise you're shooting yourself in the foot. If they're used to getting help to sleep at night, then they're gonna really want that help during the day. The drive to sleep is not as strong during the day and it comes and goes. You have to really stack the odds in your favor to get your little one napping well. So night sleep comes first. Number two, watch your wake times. You know, I love awake times. I did not list them here because I didn't have room, but you can easily go to like, a few of my recent posts here on Instagram and see specific awake times for your little one's age. Um, and make sure to stick to those. Fill your baby's belly. So just make sure your baby isn't going to wake up after 20 minutes because they're hungry. So the thing about the routine of they eat, play, and they sleep, it sounds great in theory, but when you have a big play session, especially as your little one gets older and has long awake times, if you feed them and they have an hour play and then you put them down for a nap, they're going to wake up hungry at some point. We're trying to get hour and a half or two hour naps out of them. So instead, I don't love strict feeding schedules. Um, if you want to follow that, you can, but just add in a top up feed like 20 minutes before nap time so that you're ensuring they're not going to wake up hungry or give them a snack if they're on solids or make sure their meal uh, coincides with being 20 to 30 minutes before they fall asleep for their nap so they don't wake up hungry. Um, number four, create a nap friendly space and a pre-nap routine. So what this means is when we start nap training, it's time to get your little one sleeping in the same space that they sleep in at night. Since most of us are stuck at home, it's actually quite easy. You're going to be home. So they're going to be sleeping in the crib. Um, probably not the best in it. They're probably too old, but in the crib. So the same space they sleep at night in the crib in a darkened bedroom with white noise playing, have their sleep sack on, use all these sleep familiarities to help your little one understand what the heck is going on. And so that they know it's time to sleep again, stack the odds in your favor. If you're doing all this in the evening to teach your little one's time to sleep, you should use it during the day as well. So much of their world, um, they can't understand yet because they're so young. So use these familiarities, these independent sleep associations, um, cause they will help your little one understand it's time to sleep and also darkness and white noise help our little ones sleep uh, deeper and longer. And then just take one or two elements from your bedtime routine and put them in your little one's pre-nap calming routine. It depends on your little one. If you have a really active and energetic baby or toddler, they may need 10 to 15 minutes in their dark bedroom with white noise playing to calm down and to like unwind from what's all the excitement of the day. Maybe they want one simple book. Maybe they want a few lullabies. You know your baby best, so whatever calms them best. But utilize darkness and white noise for sure. If your little one usually is ready for naps and falls asleep easily, you could just have five minutes in their bedroom. Ideally, you would feed them outside of the bedroom. So this is what's different for naps and nighttime sleep training. We don't want to associate feeding and falling asleep. So you feed your baby if they're due for a feed and then, you know, ideally you have 15 to 20 minutes pass, but if you're like, oh shoot, I need to feed them before nap time, feed them in a different room, feed them in the bright living room, you know, get a good meal in them, um, assuming you're breastfeeding or bottle feeding or give them a snack and then go into their bedroom to do the pre-nap calming routine. That's a good way to separate feeding and falling asleep. You want to encourage independent sleep in a nap power hour. So again, babies that fall asleep on their own for naps sleep longer, plain and simple, because they're able to resettle themselves after that first sleep cycle. So the 40 minute nap suddenly goes to like an 80 or 90 minute nap, maybe even longer if it's appropriate for their age. So they've got to fall asleep on their own for naps. Uh, the nap power hour is what we utilize when we're nap training. And what that means is when you go in to give your baby a nap, to teach them to fall asleep independently for a nap, you know that they're gonna be in there for a one hour minimum. I'll probably get some questions on this. If your baby flat out refuses because it's day one or two, you stay in there an hour and then you give up. <laughs> and you go play and have fun because you're both gonna need it and try again later. Later means whenever your baby seems tired, like an hour later. I wouldn't wait until their next nap is due because that's an insanely long awake time. 
about an hour-ish later, it could be 30 minutes depending on your little one, and go and try again. You don't want to spend all day trying to get your baby to nap because you'll go mental. Um, if your little one falls, like if it takes 30 minutes for your baby to fall asleep, but then they only sleep like 30 minutes or longer, okay, then you can call it, when they wake up, you can call it quits because they've been in the crib an hour. If they fall asleep quickly, like five minutes into their nap, Um, or into being in their crib, but then they wake up after 30 minutes, this means they stay in their crib for another 30, 25 to 30 minutes, and you utilize your nap training steps. The nap power hour means they are in the crib at least an hour to get their body used to being in there. If you always pick your baby up after a 30 minute nap, they're not learning to consolidate their daytime sleep. And then once all that goes well and you get them napping consistently well, you wanna keep a consistent nap schedule. So once it's working, don't break it. Um, Again, easy to do right now if we're all stuck at home. So once you figure out the awake times that work for your little one, your little one's sliding or into two naps a day or one nap a day, just keep with your consistent routine. Wake them at the same time every morning, give them naps at the same time every day, set their body clock to sleep at predictable times, which helps naps come so much easier for the long term. All right, so that's the basics, right? Go for it. (laughs) All right, let's see if you guys have any specific questions about naps. And my guess is you do because we had a lot yesterday. And I'm sorry if I didn't get to yours yesterday. Hey, Tracinko, we are back. All right, let me... Oh, I'm loving your hearts, guys. It makes me feel so good. Ah, what do I do with the routine now that the clocks have gone forward? That is a great question. I have a specific guide that kind of lays out the specific steps of what to do since the clocks have sprung forward. Um, In Europe, they just did, like on Saturday, Sunday. Um, It depends. If you are cool with going with a later schedule because you're usually home with your little one, or, you know, we all are, but in general, if you, like for instance, if they woke at six and napped at 11 and went to bed at six, but you're like, Hey, that's cool. Let's let them wake at seven, go to bed at 12 and have a bedtime of seven. You can do that. You can just like go with the later times, but if you can't do that because of your routine that you have going, or if you don't want to do that, or sometimes we find our babies aren't like, Oh cool. I'll just do everything an hour later. Their bodies naturally adapt to their environment. So often we find like, although parents may love an hour later bedtime and hope their little one sleeps an hour later in the morning, it doesn't always work out. So we do have to follow our baby's lead. So I do have tips on that. Um, Really and truly, you should check out the guide on my website because it has all the details. If you just go onto it, babysleepmadesimple.com, you can do a search for um, clocks springing forward, daylight savings. There's two guides. There's a fall back and a spring forward. So just pick the spring forward and it walks you through three extra tips to make this work because now that we have brighter evenings we really have to incorporate darkness in our little ones evenings so that it tells a signal to their brain and their body to relax it's time to go to bed um i tried to explain daylight savings to my five-year-old it took like an hour this weekend and she still doesn't get it so like she's like why can't i go to bed later you said the clocks are later and we had to reset her clock and even she couldn't understand it so it is a confusing concept how do you explain it to a kid like she just doesn't get it um but check out my guide that's really got the best advice for you um if you want to kind of get keep on your schedule that you had going before the clocks change um i hope that helps good morning Here we go. Little blessings. Would starting nap training around 12 months after just starting to sleep through the night one week ago affect that? Sleep training was a huge complicated journey for us. Look, if you want to take a breather, take a breather. You know what I mean? There's no rush to begin nap training unless you feel the rush. Um, If sleep training was a huge complicated journey and now your little one's sleeping through the night and you want to enjoy that, enjoy it. And when you get to the point where naps are really, really annoying the heck out of you, then begin nap training. Um... But just know that your little one is going to start to show signs of wanting to transition to one nap in the next one to three months, probably. Um, You can check out my guide on on transitioning to one nap and signs that your little one is ready and how to do it. So you can pay attention to that. You could hang out for now and choose to nap train them when they go down to one nap a day. So you can get a beautiful two to three hour long nap every day. It's up to you. You don't have to nap train now. When you decide to nap train, will it affect nights? Probably not. I mean, if you stick to your plan, 
Um, naps can take a little bit longer than nights, but when we go through nap training and in my nap training program, we always prioritize bedtime and nighttime sleep. So you have tips on, on doing that. Um, but it's really up to you. You don't have to nap train. Like I said, if naps start to drive you crazy or if you see your little ones just really tired all day long, then I encourage you to do it. And don't be fearful that it will ruin what you've done at night. It could affect it for a night or two. But if you have a solid sleep foundation at night, your little one should be quite resilient to it. If you want to give it several weeks for your little one to get really used to sleeping amazingly at night, do that. And then when you begin nap training, they have more of a base to fall back on, if that makes sense. I hope that answered your question. But you're okay to take a breather. You're okay to start now. You're okay to start when they transition to one nap. It is up to um, to you. It can sometimes affect night sleep in the beginning. But the thing about going through sleep training once is you know what to do to get your little one back on track. And although it was a huge complicated journey, I feel you often the second time or if you have to do it again later it doesn't go as bad there's muscle memory in there for your little one jennifer so hard to put down baby drowsy awake or awake she always fusses is that normal yes that is very normal baby is wide awake after short naps do i let the nap end or try to rock her to sleep if she's fussy still so yeah like in the meantime and I kind of said this yesterday, if you have a little one, especially younger babies, and they have a short nap, and if you can go in there and you can get them back to sleep easily, and they sleep like another sleep cycle, another 30 to 45 minutes, and that doesn't bother you or annoy you, go for it. Because it can help them get like that large chunk of restful sleep that they need. Um, if you're trying to do this and your little one very rarely resettles, then, then stop trying because you're just going to drive yourself and your baby crazy. Um, it is very normal for little ones to fuss when they're put down awake, whether it's bedtime, um, or naps. So we always start with nights cause nights go easier. Um, and it gets your little one used to falling asleep on their own. It's not, it's not their first rodeo by the time you nap train, right? They already are doing it during the night. You're confident that they can do it. And they do know how to do it. You just have to show them that you meet, you know, naps are going to happen the same way as night sleep. So it's 100% normal for baby to fuss. Like they're used to falling asleep one way and now we're asking them to fall asleep in a different way and either they don't like it or they don't understand it. So they're going to fuss. So what the best way to succeed and get through this as quickly as possible is to have a clear plan. How am I going to handle this? And if you sleep trained at night, then you can use the exact same plan that you used that to use during the day. If you did Ferber, do Ferber. If you did... Pick up, put down, do pick up, put down. Use the same thing. It's familiar to you. It's familiar to your baby. Um, if she's wide awake after short naps, though, then until you begin nap training, it's okay to just let her have a short nap. Once you begin nap training, you should utilize the nap power hour. You worked in CHLA NICU in 2010. Ah, with me. Wait. Was Rumble your maiden name? I'm going to connect with you later. Send me a DM. I worked at Children's in LA. Uh, Nick, you, I love that hospital. I love, love, love that unit. You guys were the nicest people ever to a travel nurse. I can't explain. They threw me a baby shower and I was a travel nurse. Like, I, I just remember it was the nicest hospital. If you live in LA, go to Children's. Uh, my baby is 13 months and sleeps 11 to 12 hours at night. That's awesome. She usually does great for naps, but lately she's been fighting them. This doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes she won't go to sleep for her nap is it one or two if she is on two naps a day check out my guide on transitioning to one nap some little ones are ready at 13 months especially if they sleep through the night every night like for a long time so you can go on my website and just do a quick search for transition to one nap and you'll find that guide um lately she's fighting them so yeah it definitely could be that it doesn't happen all the time but sometimes she won't go to sleep so have a look at my guide what you could also do though before you decide to just like transition to one nap. And I teach this in my program. Once your little one turns 11 to 12 months, I often recommend limiting the first nap if they're on two naps a day, limiting the first nap to one hour. Cause what we find is they still like that morning nap. They'll sleep for an hour and a half or two hours, but then that afternoon nap is wasted. It gets pushed too late. It gets rejected. And then it's like all hell breaks loose until bedtime. So at 11 to 12 months, if you feel like naps are getting tricky, limit the morning nap to one hour to preserve the afternoon nap. Because most little ones still want two naps a day until around 14 or 15, maybe even 16 months. So it can buy you a few more months until they're ready to transition. So you could try that tip and also look at my two-to-one transition guide. Oh, your baby's four months old. That's so sweet, Jennifer. Then they're probably easy to get back down. I would do that. My baby's 13. 
Oh, wait, I just read that. <laughs> Sorry. Yay, I'm excited for another live, too. Little Blessings is asking about the nap power hour. This can be a tricky one to work out. So she says, is it an hour total, including however much they slept? So if they don't sleep at all, give up after an hour. If they fall asleep relatively quickly, but wake up after a short nap of 30 minutes, then you need to do your nap training steps to get them back to sleep for at least another 30 minutes. If at that point, which is an hour total, they have like haven't fallen back asleep, you can call it quits. If they sleep for 30 minutes and then for 20 minutes you try to get them back to sleep and they fall asleep, let them sleep. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? But for sure, once their body goes into the crib, you are trying for that nap for an hour. Um, if they resist for 45 minutes and then fall asleep, obviously don't wake them up at the hour mark. Let them sleep. The idea with this is to help their body understand that they're going to be in a crib for at least a certain amount of time to help them consolidate that daytime sleep. If they wake up after 30 minutes and you always take them right out of bed, their body is not going to, how is their body going to learn to extend a nap, right? How are they ever going to learn to do it? So you want to do your nap training steps that you should already have like written out for you to follow, um, that walk you through it. But that's what the nap power hour means. So is it an hour total, including however much they slept? Yes, but don't wake them up after an hour, if that's what you're asking. If, like I would wake up a little bit after a two hour nap, if they're still on multiple naps per day. If they're only on one nap a day, you can let them sleep up to three hours. Oh, you answered it. I mean, I answered it. <laughs> Asked a question on Monday. Little one is eight months old, fighting the third nap. He falls asleep independently, but wakes two times to eat at night. Doctor doesn't want to night wean yet. Well, then go with your doctor. Thought we were ready to transition, but maybe we should wait. Well, oh yeah, hey, Crystal. Um, why, why do you want to wait? Maybe it's not going well. If he's fighting the third nap, try. If he's fighting the third nap, just go ahead and try. Try to extend your awake times. Have a look at my three to two transition guide. I'm sure you have. Um, extend awake times by just 15 minutes. See how you go. It takes a while to like get your little one sleeping longer and then tweaking their nap times to make the awake times all work. But you know, we can get you through it. I mean, it depends. If he's fighting the third nap consistently, then it's probably something he's ready to drop it. He sleeps great at night and he's eight months old. That's basically the criteria. If he wants to take the third nap at least four days a week, then maybe hold on to it. But if he's only taking it once or twice a week, despite trying every day, then you can drop it. Sometimes you have to push your little one on this one. Eunice, baby is eight months and one week, independent sleeper at night, working on naps, wakes at 5.30. Ew. So I push the first nap to eight, but overtired, so the first nap's only 30 minutes, and then the next two naps are 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah, so that's another thing. Um, ideally, you don't ever want to have a nap before 8 a.m. because it can reinforce early wakings. However, if your baby wakes at 5.30 in the morning and like they've been taking a nap at seven, let's just say, you don't have to keep them awake until eight o'clock on the first day. Have the nap be 7.15 for a day or two, then 7.30 for a day or two, then 7.45. It's like slowly shifting it later so that they have time to adapt to it. Um, if you haven't yet, Eunice, I have a guide on babies waking too early. If you go to my website and just do a quick search for baby waking early in the morning, you'll see it. It's like nine steps or something to troubleshoot your little one's early wakings. Um, they're turning eight months. I mean... At eight months, they can go two to three hours. So, I mean, eight o'clock's not horribly unrealistic of you to ask your baby. It's only two and a half hour awake time. And the, probably the reason why the next two naps are 30, 40 minutes is because they're not yet an independent sleeper during the day. So work on that. Tell yourself this is what quarantine is for. And for the next one to two weeks, consistently work on getting them sleeping independently for these naps. Um, push the a.m. nap as late, like later slowly. But when you get to eight o'clock, stay there. Again, it's only two and a half hours. I'm sure he's ready for a nap by 7.30, but try to push him a little bit. I mean, you can have him asleep at 7.45 or 7.50 for a few days to see if that helps. Um, but really work on independent sleep for all naps. That could also help, by the way, with the early waking. When your little one is always falling asleep on their own for all sleeps, that can help with early wakings as well because they're used to resettling themselves. 
So you'll get there, sweetie. It takes a while, but work on independent sleep. Ah, Sharice, you're loving it? I'm loving it too. Speech gal, almost six month old has been so difficult to nap in her crib since out of the swaddle. Yeah, and she's almost six months, remember? So we can't have heavy expectations. We are working on nighttime sleep now. She's in the sleep sack, white noise in her dark room. I can't transfer her. If you're working on nighttime sleep, it's okay to help her nap, okay? One step at a time because you'll get so overwhelmed. You'll get so exhausted. It's frustrated, all that stuff. So really work on nighttime sleep. You're not confusing her. You're giving her and yourself a break during the day and you know that you will get there. We're just dividing it up nights first and then naps. So it's okay if she would rather nap, um, next to you or in your arms or in the stroller. That's okay while you work on nighttime sleep because you're keeping her well rested. Once nighttime sleep is going great for a week or two, then you can focus on naps. Then she'll be six to seven months old and we know we can have, um, more expectations or clearer expectations for her naps. Um, you'll get there, sweetie. Make sure you check out my six month old sleep training guide if you haven't already, um, or five month old sleep training guide, or both. <laughs> they're not that different. Um, they're both on my website if you want to do a quick search. But hang in there, I promise you'll get there. Any suggestions for an arms out sleep sack that is very thin? Summer is coming in San Diego and baby. Sleeps warm it is as it is. Thanks, Daddy. Um, my husband's favorite city is San Diego, by the way. Um, yes, I would do like a um, like a really light cotton muslin. I used to have a halo one, and I used to have an Aiden and an Ace. But you know, in all fairness, the Aiden and Ace ripped really easily. So if you get this beautiful light cotton muslin or the bamboo, they're beautiful. But a few times in the washer, and they can rip. So the halo did not rip. Um, if anybody else has great suggestions for super light sleep sacks, arms out, let us know. Those are the ones that I used for my daughter. We're not yet there for my for my baby, my son. Um, look at the TOG rating, T-O-G, and go for something of like one. And remember, keep the sleep sack, but dress your baby lightly underneath. So at some point in the summer, they may be wearing like a sleeveless onesie, showing off their muscles, right? A sleeveless onesie with a light cotton muslin, so light cotton muslin sleep sack is a great way to have a nap. And even if it's like if you don't have air conditioning, or run air conditioning you can have like a fan going in the bedroom we did that with my daughter and that worked really really well keep the sleep sack but just dress them lighter underneath it um halo it and an ace was okay it ripped um or you can just probably go on amazon and just say sleep sack tall grading one and your baby's age and you can find that too i mean i personally love the grow bag but i don't know if they make super light ones i use those for winter because they're durable and cute and all that good stuff okay i hope that helps is it normal for baby to fuss for naps? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he goes down pretty quiet at bedtime, but fusses and cries a bit for naps. So work on awake times. Have a look at the recommended awake times from my recent post. And I don't know the age, but if they're six months or older, work on them falling asleep independently for their naps. Naps are harder, guys, because again, like the drive to sleep comes and goes. Like at bedtime, you know your baby's tired and they're going to be tired during the night. So it's like that's working in your favor. During the day, the drive to sleep goes like this. <laughs> it comes and goes. So if you're accidentally trying to get your little one to nap at a time where they're really not that tired, it's like beating your head against a wall. So follow the recommended awake times for their age and work on getting them sleeping independently. It's totally normal for them to fuss. They have more uh, charge in their battery, if you will, during the day. So they're going to resist. They could resist a bit more. Um, you just have to stick with it, but it does work. My little one turned six months today. Happy six months. She sleeps on her own for naps and bedtime, but her naps are only 30 minutes long with hour and a half awake windows. What can I do to lengthen her naps? She naps in her crib. Make the awake times longer. She's six months today. So if every single one of her naps is 30 minutes, I would extend the first awake time to an hour, 45 minutes. Then I would do the same, like an hour 45 to two hours for the rest of them, and then maybe before bedtime, two and a half hours. I would do that. Um, but if she's falling asleep always on her own, but you're only giving her an hour and a half awake window, it's time to extend it. For the sake of simplicity, you could say two hours for all awake times, but I find shorter in the morning and extending throughout the day works really well. So you could do an hour 45 in the morning and maybe two hours for the rest of the day, maybe two and a half hours before bedtime. But if she's falling asleep on her own for naps, well done. All you have to do is figure out the awake times that work for her, and that's the easier part of nap training. All right, good luck. And if she wakes up early, make sure to leave her a little while. 
My little one is 15 months and refuses to nap unless I rock her to sleep. When I rock her, she cries until she falls asleep. I try to put her down at 12.30, but she resists until 1. She sleeps independently at night. So she's 15 months old. She sleeps independently at night. That's great. Um, the awake time before the nap, go for four and a half hours. So four and a half hours until she's asleep, maybe five. Uh, get her outside in the morning if possible, like at least run around a little bit or walk or scoot or whatever. Get some fresh air, some natural light, you know, go into your yard, just anything. Um, but four and a half to five hours asleep time until the nap. Like it depends on when she's waking up. You're trying at 1230, but if she's up at six o'clock or 630, that's too long of an awake time. Usually when we transition to one nap, the nap is at 11 a.m. And that's because most of the babies uh, that I work with are waking like between six and seven. So we start with that shorter awake time and we go within 11 o'clock. Over time, as your little one naps really well for that one nap, and as they get older, the nap goes later. But usually 12.30 only works if your baby's waking up at like 7.30 or 8 in the morning. So depending on when they wake up in the morning, four and a half to five hours until they're asleep for a nap. So that should help. And maybe keep rocking her while you sort out this awake time. And once she goes to sleep quite easily um, with an appropriate awake time while you rock her, then you know that's the awake time that she needs. And then you can work on getting her falling asleep at that awake time. So you can divide up nap training. First, figure out awake times and then get her falling asleep independently. Just so that it ideally goes better and you're more confident. Um, and if she's, I mean, if she's crying, she's probably crying because she's too tired. So that's probably why. Okay, I hope that helps. Five months and my girl sleeps on her own only 30 to 40 minutes and mostly falls asleep on my chest. I'm just worried that she doesn't sleep her daily norm. Well, check out, Yulia, check out my five-month-old sleep guide if you haven't yet. It's on my website. Just do a search for five-month-old sleep training. Um, for babies younger than six months, we don't want to stress out too hard about naps. We want to make sure nights are going well first. So if your little one's not yet sleeping independently at night, let's work on that first. And then once she turns six months and she's sleeping good at night, then you can focus a little bit harder on naps. It's okay. If it's okay with you for the next few weeks, keep holding her for her naps. Like that's okay. Or go out in the stroller or put her down in her crib for some naps. It's, it's okay if they're short. You can mix it up a little bit. Um, and just have her nap often. So at five months old, she should be napping every one and a half to two and a half hours. If she's not sleeping so much, go with one and a half to two hour awake times. And it again, doesn't matter how many naps she takes, just make sure she gets a minimum of like two and a half, three hours of total sleep every day. And even if she doesn't one day, don't stress out. You're not a bad mom. You're doing a great job. You're trying your hardest. This can be really tough, but work on nights first and it's okay to help her sleep during the day. And just know when she gets a little bit older and is sleeping better at night, you can work on naps. Don't feel guilty about naps on your chest if you're okay with them. I recently weaned off from nighttime breastfeeding my toddler. Instead, I tell her a story and then count until she falls asleep. Does this count as independent falling asleep? Good question. If you're in the room with her while she falls asleep, then not quite. You've done great. But if you're still in the room, you're, so your presence is comforting her to sleep and you're counting or singing or something like that, you're still helping her fall asleep. And the reason why this matters, I mean, if you do that and she sleeps through the night and there's no biggie, Hey, you could leave it. But if she still tries to wake up at night or if she's waking early in the morning, then for sure what you need to do is work on weaning yourself out of that room. And what you do, I mean, you've already done so much. You just do the popping in and out method. You just say, okay, sweetie. Yeah, she's a toddler. You say, okay, sweetie, mommy's just going to go get a glass of water. I'll be back in one minute. And come back in one minute. Keep your word. And then, you know, hang out for a minute. You do a little bit of counting. And then say, I'm just going to check on your brother. Or I'm going to feed the dog. Or I'm going to flip the laundry. Or I'm going to go to the bathroom. Like, whatever. And then stay out a few more minutes. And then always come back. But just stand quietly at the doorway. Like, you'll know. And finally, after a few check-ins and check-outs, um, she will have gotten used to falling asleep without you in the room. It may take a few nights, but just say, don't worry, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Um, when you're out of the room and she falls asleep, this is what leads to consistently sleeping through the night and later in the morning. So if you're struggling with either of those, then I would work on that. Okay, I hope that helps. If I do the first nighttime and, and at naps I still rock him, wouldn't that delay nighttime progress? No, not. we don't find that. 
a well-rested baby sleeps better day and night. And I know other baby sleep consultants, I do both at the same time. So I'm not trying to be contradictory. I'm not trying to be confusing. You can do whatever you want. I mean, it just depends. But I have found that if you're trying to work on nights and naps at the same time, it is an overwhelming experience. And a lot of parents give up. So... I recommend working on nights first and it's okay to help your baby nap during the day. It's not going to last forever. I explained this yesterday. Tell yourself, this is like a short term solution that we're doing. We're helping her nap during the day because it's easier and it helps her get the rest that she needs during the day because a well-rested baby during the day will adapt to sleep training at night better and quicker and easier. So I'm going to help her. It's not going to confuse her because different parts of the brain govern day and night sleep. Work on nights first then take a breather, enjoy one to two weeks of really good night sleep, and then tackle naps. Doing it this way, I have found, helps parents stay consistent and therefore leads to better results. And no, it should not delay nighttime progress. Very, In very like rare circumstances, as soon as babies start sleeping well at night, some parents will say, like, she just started sleeping through the night two days ago, and now she's really fighting naps hard. If that's the case for you, you could start nap training right away. Um, because some babies are just like, okay, I got the hang of this independent sleep. I want to stick with it, but I wouldn't do it until they're used to it. Oh, your daughter was in the NICU for 56 days. That's a long time. And now we didn't get posted them. Oh, you're such an angel. We used to get lovely donations. We love our NICU nurses everywhere. I know. I know. I miss the NICU so much. I don't work in the NICU, um, anymore. I miss it so, so, so much. It's where my obsession with babies started. Um, yeah. And NICU parents, by the way, are like the strongest, most amazing parents because it's hard. It's hard to have your baby and then to leave it at the hospital. So kudos to you guys because, um, it's not easy. Almost eight month old has been back and forth between two and three naps for a long time. How can we make it through? Sometimes we'll take an hour and a half or two, two naps, sometimes an hour 45, ah, Hour and a half plus two, sometimes an hour. Oh my God, I love all these hearts. Um, An hour plus 45 plus 45, which makes bedtime later. Go to two. Go to two naps. If you're like flipping, flopping for weeks and weeks and weeks, and which makes bedtime later, that sentence right there tells me that you're ready to transition to two. I'm not going to say on the first day it's going to go swimmingly, um, but just know we've decided we're going to transition to two naps. Here's the plan for it. Let's do it. And you can go to my website and just do a quick search for um, transition three to two naps and you'll get the step-by-step guide on what to do. It's extending awake times, encouraging independent sleep and moving bedtime earlier so that the awake times aren't too long. And if you stick with that for one to two weeks, your little one will transition. That's not the hardest transition in the world. Two to one is harder than three to two. So, um, just, I think if it's been going on this long and bedtime is getting, um, sacrificed or whatever the word is, then I would, go ahead and transition to two. My baby just takes naps for 15 to 20 minutes. So frustrating. He is almost seven months. Um, Check out my six month old or seven month old sleep training guide on my website. Just do a search for their age. Make sure nights are going well. Make sure awake times are going right. Um, And just by following those tips, your little one should nap a little bit longer. Um, But follow the tips in the guide because I'm guessing they're not sleeping great at night. I could be wrong, but it kind of walks you through the steps of what to do. Um, Once you get nighttime sleep going great at seven months, you can work on nap training. And, you know, within just a few days to a few weeks, you have a really great, great sleeper day and night. My question went to the question box. Did that work? I don't know where the question box is. (laughs) I'm sorry. Post it again. No idea where the question box is. Eunice, what do you mean by nap training steps to get back to sleep if baby wakes up from a short nap? So you have to have a plan, Eunice. You have to, like, how are you getting your baby to fall asleep independently for naps? Um, If you're doing, like, extinction, like, here, go into your crib and fall asleep and you're leaving the room and not coming back. Okay, well, then when they wake up early from a nap, don't go in there until the hour mark. But a lot of parents don't want to do that method, so they have specific sleep training method. Ferber, pick up, put down, whatever you want to do, camping out, like... Whatever you want to do, like the method you have decided to use to get your little one to fall asleep independently for their naps, like whatever steps you take at the beginning of the nap, do those same steps if they wake up early from a nap. 
So if you're doing Ferber, which is controlled crying, you put your baby in the crib and you leave the room. Let's say you're going to do intervals of three minutes, then five minutes, then seven minutes for the rest of that nap hour. If they finally fall asleep, that's great. But if they wake up in less than an hour, then you start back with those waiting intervals. Does that make sense? So you have to have a plan, basically, unless you're just going to leave them to fall asleep on their own, which many parents do, and it does work. Um, then you would just not go back in until the nap hour is finished. I think I got confused, Crystal. You said to wait if they are waking often through the night. He should only wake once but wakes twice. Still okay to transition. Sorry for confusion. Well, you said your doctor didn't want to wean. Um, if your doctor says only one night feed, then get down to one night feed. Um, then do nap training. If your doctor says two night feeds, which is where you are now, then you can begin nap training. But the amount of feeds doesn't matter as much as the, them falling asleep independently. So you can give the night feed that they still need. Keep them awake. If they start to fall asleep on the breast or fall asleep on the bottle, take it out. Burp them, kind of, you know, move them around so you know they're not asleep yet. Put them in the crib to fall back to sleep on their own during the night. And when that goes easily and you're confident your baby's always falling back to sleep on their own after a night feed, then you're fine to move on to nap training. So it's independent sleep. It's not that they have to not be feeding at night. So it's just you want to make sure they're not depending on feeding um, to get them back to sleep or depending on you. They're sleeping independently. Okay, I hope that helps, Crystal. Little one is 19 weeks old. How long should I try to put her down before throwing in the towel? She fought the fourth nap, so we dropped it, but she fights the third nap most days. She's... So at 20 weeks, adjusted age. So at five, 20 weeks, like, earliest, adjusted age. And that's your baby's due date, not their birthday. At 20 weeks from their due date is the earliest I like to begin nighttime sleep training. So if you're talking about naps, uh... Like, I wouldn't push too hard. You can try for, like, 10 or 15 minutes. But if she's fighting it, just she's a little bit young. Do you know what I mean? If you're talking about nights, then you're okay to be a little bit more, like, stricter, basically, um, for nights. But if we're ta yeah, talking about naps, she fought the fourth nap, so we dropped it. But she fights the third naps most days. I would not be pushing hard for independent sleep for the third nap. The third nap is just, like, that annoying. It's like the bridge to bedtime. It's not, like we often don't do nap training for three naps a day. Even in my program, if your baby's still taking three naps a day, we nap train for the first two. And then the third one's always a cat nap, right? And it's unpredictable. It's like, ugh, it's annoying. So let them do whatever. Let them be in the carrier or go for a stroll. It's just the bridge to make it to bedtime. And then very soon when your little one's like between six to eight months and sleeping great at night, then we can drop that third nap. So don't push hard for independent sleep for the third nap. If you want to start trying for it, try for the first nap. That's the, usually the easiest one. Then you can try for first and second. But the third one, just forget it. It's going to be gone soon. Um, do whatever works easiest for the third nap. My baby just turned six months and still wakes up three times a night, and I've been using your program for two weeks and no progress yet. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um... I mean, it's hard to say without knowing any more specifics of the situation, but for sure, whichever method you pick, you know, it's like beating a dead horse, but you, but you have to be super, super consistent. The methods do work, but only when parents are super, super consistent. Um, that's usually one of the top reasons why the methods don't work is because we give in because our little one cries a little bit too much the first night or... Um, you know, the sleep schedule wasn't consistent that day, or we find reasons to think that our baby needs us. Like it might be, it might be teething, you know, or they might, their ears might be hurting. We can often find reasons for giving in. And maybe that's not the case for you, but I do find that parental inconsistency is one of the top reasons why the methods don't work because babies learn through consistency. Um, if you want to send me a DM, just let me know I'm in your program. Um, and give me maybe a bit more specifics and me and my team can help you through that to kind of help you troubleshoot what's going on and what you could tweak a little bit. Okay. It's hard to hold my little baby because I have a three-year-old. Well, that does make it a lot, um, harder. Baby carrier, maybe? My 16-week-old naps great and sleeps great during the night but struggles to fall asleep initially. Well... I mean, if they're napping great and sleeping great at night, you could just leave it as it is. But if you're finding it really frustrating to get them down to sleep, have a look at the recommended awake times. And, you know, do you need to shorten them a little bit or do you need to lengthen them a little bit? 
I mean, it's okay to leave it as it is if they're sleeping great anyway, but if you're finding you would like them to go down easier, then have a look at awake times and do a little bit of tweaking based on my recommended awake times. And you can find those in earlier posts from this week and last week. Ah, the Zen Sack by Nested Bean. We love it. Thank you for that recommendation. I'm sorry, this is not about naps. Is it possible to sleep train without night weaning? I feel like my six-month-old is confused by sleeping independently than bottling, bottle at night waking. Once we cut out all night feeds, it's true. Like little ones definitely take to sleeping through the number consistently. But like at six months old, a lot of, a lot of babies still need a night feed. So it is totally possible to get your little one sleeping independently and sleeping well and still giving a night feed. Again, just make sure they always stay awake during that night feed. If they start to fall asleep, then stop the night feed, burp them, make sure they're at least like not too drowsy, like a little bit drowsy is okay, but still awake, not fully asleep, and then get them falling back asleep on their own in the crib. That helps it go well. If you're feeding them two times a night or more, then it's really hard. But if you're only down to one night feed, you can make it work. Yeah, so they're sleeping independently at bedtime and then keep them awake for that for that feeding at night. And only one feed um, and then put them back in their crib to fall asleep on their own. Leave the room for them to fall asleep on their own and then it should go well. Um, and then within a few weeks, maybe or a few months, you can fully wean off the night feed. We have a really thin nested bean sleep sack. She's always hot and we have found the thin cotton nested bead helps a lot. We use it in the winter too. Thank you so much for that recommendation. During the night, my baby started rolling over on his stomach and he can't roll back over. I constantly have to roll him back over through the night. Give him space. Like, don't rush him right away. Give him a few minutes to try. And also during the day, give him several opportunities throughout the day to learn how to roll from his stomach back to his back. Um, talk to his doctor and tell him what's going on. And if the doctor's like, well, you're okay to leave him, then follow your doctor's advice. Um, you don't want to get caught in this game of like cat and mouse all night long rolling your baby. It's usually a short period until your little one can freely roll themselves back. Have them practice throughout the day a few times, you know, five minutes on their tummy doing tummy time and have them practice rolling. Um, and then also when they do it at night, just wait, just wait a few minutes to give them the opportunity to understand like, oh, I'm going to have to try to do this on my own. Mommy doesn't run in at the first whimper and immediately fix it for me. It sucks. I know, but it, it is a short phase. Hi, Jilly. How do you keep a consistent bedtime when naps are unpredictable? When naps vary, wart in length, I think is very in length. It will also vary at what times the next naps are coming. My little one is six months, five months adjusted age. So five months adjusted age, we go by adjusted. Just remember that some unpredictability is to be expected. But what you want to do is you want to prioritize bedtime. So if bedtime is 7 p.m. and you have a five-month-old, basically, adjusted age, then we know that we want about a two and a half hour awake time before bedtime of seven o'clock. So that's gonna be like 4.30, is my math right? Yes, so you always wanna make sure your little one's awake by 4.30. So if they're gonna have a third nap of the day, if it's gonna start at 3.45 or it's gonna start at four, then you always wake them by 4.30 to keep with their consistent bedtime. And this means you may have to plan ahead and know like I'm gonna have to try to get them down by like 3.30 for that third nap. Do you know what I mean? Prioritize bedtime, try to make that a fixed point um, you know the bedtime that works well for them. Make that your fixed point in the day and know you're always going to wake your baby from the last nap at this time. And then plan a little bit early. Don't let it get to be 4.15 and you go, crap, they haven't napped. Plan a little bit ahead. Try to get that last nap in. Even 20 minutes is okay. 30 minutes is a little bit better. And always wake them at the same time. Bedtime takes priority and night sleep take priority. And very soon you'll get into a better, more consistent rhythm. Oh, I love all those hearts. What to do if... My five-month-old naps 30 to 40 minutes, sleeps during the night 10 to 12 hours, and she can stay longer that she should during her naps up to three hours. <laughs> uh, she naps five-month-old, 30 to 40 minutes. It sounds like she sleeps through the night for 10 to 12 hours. Yeah, so don't wait for her to get tired. So if she's five months old, the wake times should be one and a half to two and a half hours. Some babies do not show sleepy signs, but I promise you she needs to nap. You can go with two and a half hour awake times if you think that she likes long awake times, but I wouldn't be watching for her to yawn or get fussy because at that point it's probably too late and that will lead to consistently short naps. Instead, try to have her asleep at the two and a half hour mark. My baby, God bless him, oh, he's a sweet, 
happy, pretty adaptable baby, and he's really not showing his sleepy signs anymore. But when I take him to the bedroom while watching his awake times, he falls asleep. Like, and of course, grandma and everybody's going, he's not tired, look at him, right? Go by awake times. <laughs> Eight month old went whips through the diaper. I had to change his clothes and then he had a hard time going back down. Woke up early, only not for 20 minutes, 25 minutes so far today. Yeah, that happens. I mean, if it's happening consistently, you could try one size larger diaper overnight, especially if you have like an older uh, baby or toddler. Some parents use like an Huggies, like an overnight diaper, and they'll even sometimes put like a swim diaper on top of it. That's like one of the tricks that our moms in 21 Days to Peace and Quiet share. Um, if this is just a one-off though, and you're having a crappy day, just take deep breaths, get through the day, prioritize bedtime. Bedtime is your reset button and start over. If it's a consistent problem, then try those tips to help your little one not leak through um, during the night. But if they woke up early, it could be throwing naps off. Just do what you can to get through the day, follow awake times, and get them down at their normal bedtime and start over tomorrow. Should I offer him... Ah, same question. Should I offer him more time to nap? He usually naps twice a day for a total of two and a half to three hours. No, because you, you don't want to repeat the vicious cycle. Let him nap up to three hours and then prioritize bedtime. How do you figure out the appropriate nap or bedtime? I feel sometimes... I know it, then I don't. So we start out with awake times first, and then once we get your little one sleeping independently at night, um, then awake times become a little bit easier because little ones can handle more consistent awake times. And then once you get your little one nap trained, then a by-the-clock schedule emerges. I don't like forcing by-the-clock schedules onto babies like during sleep training. I mean, bedtime, yes, but not nap times because... If they reject naps, then you're suddenly having them have really long awake times and then they fight naps and only nap for a short time. It's a vicious cycle. So I go by awake times until your little one's sleeping well and then you see that by the clock pattern emerge. It's a lot easier. You'll be like, oh, look at this. I'm following these awake times. I always wake him by 7 a.m. He's always napping at nine, around nine and around one. And so that seems to kind of work for us. So boom, we have our by the clock schedule. But I follow awake times. Um... I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any more questions. What does sleeping good at night mean for four to five months old? You are a traveler too. Okay, I'm going to connect with you. Um, what does sleeping good at night mean for four to five months old? Great question. Well, first of all, you're not going to be doing nap training for four to five months old, remember, because we start at six months old. So you're just going to follow awake times. You can try to get some independent naps the first nap of the day, maybe the second. You're doing the best that you can. Sleeping good good at night for a four to five month old does it doesn't mean that they have to fall asleep on their own it just means getting long sleep stretches so four to five months old sleeping great is having like one night feed potentially having two night feeds if they settle quite easily and they're sleeping long stretches long stretches like four six even longer hours but if they're waking up frequently throughout the night always needing to be fed using feeding as a means of falling back asleep or needing to be rocked back to sleep I hate to label it, but that's not good sleep yet. Do you know what I mean? Um, but again, it doesn't really matter for nap training because we're not nap training yet. Okay, let me know if I didn't answer that well. You're welcome, you're welcome. Seven-month-old falls asleep on his own but always wakes up for a night feeding around four and only takes short naps every two to three hours. Keep him awake during that night feed, back to sleep on his own, and begin nap training and or ask his doctor can we go like 11 or 12 hours straight at night without feeding and if you get permission um then get that working first baby sleeping through the night consistently for one to two weeks then begin nap training my nine month old wakes about three times at night to breastfeed however i've started to give him water instead hoping he reduces the number of night wakes you can totally do that babies don't like water at night <laughs> So you do it a few nights to make yourself feel better. And in case like they're thirsty, it helps quench their thirst. Um, but what's just as important as that is getting them falling asleep on their own, right? Because they're probably like taking a little bit of water or not, but then you're probably still helping them back to sleep in some way. So wean off of that. So you're getting him off the milk at night. You're getting his tummy used to not getting a milk at night. He's going to eat more during the day. Make sure to offer him a feed every two to three hours, whether it's milk or solids or snack. But what's just as important is independent sleeping. Falling asleep on his own at bedtime and not used to feeding anymore during the night should get him sleeping through the night. 
When do you suggest starting nap training? At six months old earliest for a baby that sleeps amazingly at night. So sleeps independently at night, either through the night or with one quick night feed. My five month old sleeps 45, 40 to 50 minute naps only. Yes, that is the length of a baby sleep cycle. And so we don't wanna be super strict with a five month old. We're gonna wait till they get a little bit older, but just know that the more we encourage independent sleeping, then your baby will be able to link sleep cycles and suddenly a 40 minute nap becomes an 80 or a 90 minute nap. Um, you can check out my five month old sleep guide on my website that walks you through the steps to take now because your baby's still a little bit young for nap training. Hi, Jilly. Baby seven months, turning eight months next week. He has four teeth and has two more breaking through. It set us back and there's an eight month regression. Should I just wait until nine months? There can be an eight month regression, but there's not always. Sometimes it comes at nine months. Sometimes it comes at 10 months. Sometimes it doesn't come. Don't let the thought of like the future regression prevent you from doing something. For instance, we went on a three week international trip. Like literally we left the day that my baby turned four months old and everybody's like four month regression. Oh my God, four month regression. And I was thinking it too. Well, we didn't cancel our plans and thank goodness now, but with everything going on, we got to see our family and everything. But my point is he didn't have the four month regression. He's regressing now at like, I don't even know how many, he's like 23 weeks or something like that. So you know what I mean? Like just wait and see what the reality is. Try not to like make plans for sleep training based on something that hasn't happened. Teething is a different story. If he's got two more breaking through, give it a few days, let him break through, and then you can do sleep training. But if you're also just at the point where you're like, I just wanna wait, I just wanna wait, then you have permission to wait as well. Do you know what I mean? But don't wait out of fear of a future regression. Wait because you either wanna wait or wait until those two teeth come through in a few days. Oh no, I was the one who went to question box. <laughs> I have a 14 month old. She's been waking up at 4.45 to 5.10. That is cruel and unusual. She then wants to nap at nine. Of course she does. She naps about an hour and a half and then sometimes naps two to three. I have, um, it's a tricky one because little ones can start waking up early because they're ready to transition to one nap, but then it's hard to transition to one nap when they wake up early. So first check out my toddler early waking guide. Okay. So go to my website, babysleepmadesimple.com, do a search for toddler waking at 5 a.m. and make sure you're doing every single one of those tips for like a good week or two and to get them sleeping later in the morning. Once they are, then you can check out my transitioning from two to one nap guide to walk you through that. It could be that contributing. Do you know what I mean? For now, if she's waking up at 4.45, she's gonna need two naps to make it to bedtime. Unless you wanna do like 5 a.m. wake up and 5 a.m. bed, 5 p.m. bedtime, if you think she's ready for, for only one nap a day, but you could get caught in that cycle. Instead, I would work on the early waking first. Can you do a vlog when you nap train your second baby? I've been thinking about that. Great minds think alike. I've totally been thinking about that. I will. I promise. I will do it. <laughs> do you have any tips on how to help a three-month-old fall asleep by themselves? Yes. Always try bedtime because bedtime is the time of the day when your baby's the most sleepy. Um, so if you haven't yet, check out my exhausted mom survival kit. You can go to exhaustedmomsurvivalkit.com, sign up for that, and I'm going to email you every one to two days with specific tips to do at bedtime. So, okay, ah, the two-minute warning from Instagram. It's like I live for this. So here's what you do. You start with bedtime. Follow my Exhausted Mom Survival Kit to help your little one understand it's time to sleep at night um, to help develop a consistent, relaxing routine for them. Once that's going for several days and you feel like it's working, then you can try to get your little one falling asleep on their own at bedtime. It is the easiest point in the day for your little one to learn new sleep habits because they're the most tired. But first you need a little bit of consistency and routine. So I would do that for at least four to seven days and then try at that time of the day. The only other time of the day that can be the easiest time to get them falling asleep independently is the first nap of the day. At three months old, this first nap is probably gonna happen at the 60 minute mark after waking in the morning. So you could also try then. Those are the two points. And for a three month old, I would still be swaddling them or I'd be using like the Merlin magic sleep suit. I'd give them a feed, I'd burp them, I'd give it like five or 10 minutes and then I would just have a dark bedroom, white noise, the bassinet of the crib and just put them down in, the, in, in their sleep space. Uh, try to be as hands off as possible. If they're upset, you can kind of put your hands on them or pick them up, but I would not let a three month old cry longer than 10 minutes. And if it's not working, then I would give up because it's still quite young. 
<gasps> 48 seconds. I don't think I can do any more, guys. Sorry. Okay, so remember I have um, a special on my net training program. It's 20% off this week. Click the link in my Instagram bio to get the details on that. I'm going to give you guys free access to my developmental activities and daily schedules guide. So I'm going to have info on that. If you're on Facebook, go to my Facebook page because I can post lots of links and I can give you the link directly. I'm going to do that or check out my stories. Um, good luck. I hope that this helped. Uh, tomorrow we have a sleep training Q&A with Ellen. So join us at the same time for that. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and a great night and, um, take care, stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye. Didn't give me the option. <laughs>